Hi, I'm Andre from the John Morris Group, and if you don't want to miss any of our content, please subscribe to our channel and push the bell button right next to the subscribe button, and you'll be notified as soon as we upload new content. If you're working in an isolation RNA DNA protein lab and you're spinning micro, microtubes, say 0.2 or 2 microliter tubes, you're going to want to pay attention to this next little clip on the 1-14 from Sigma. Now, we literally sell hundreds of these units and virtually never see one come back for any repair. They tend to last, from what we can tell, at least 10 years in the field, if not more like 15 to 20, which can be a problem if you're trying to sell new units, but it's great for you if you want your micro centrifuge to last just about forever. Some nice little features about it. Firstly, rugged and reliable, we've already covered that. There's 10 different kinds of rotors that are available. This is a, a plastic rotor. Plastic rotors are good because they're non-elastic and they're rigid. That is, aluminium or metal rotors can expand and contract when they're running, and that means that they're prone to metal fatigue. But like all rotors, you should always inspect it before a run just to make sure you haven't sustained any damage. There's a high amount of kinetic energy inside a centrifuge when it's spinning, and you definitely don't want a rotor coming apart on you. You have this handy automated opening system for you. And to load a rotor is actually really, really easy. I'm going to do it for you right now. Once it's loaded, put your samples in. Now it's really important when you're using a centrifuge, no matter what size, to make sure that your samples are of almost equal weight and always equally, equally balancing. That is, if you have one sample on this side, you must have one sample on this side. And if you have one sample over here, you must have one sample over here. Why is that useful information? Well, if you don't plan to use the full capacity of your rotor, you can still run a rotor half or a quarter full as long as you make sure that you're balancing the, the masses of your samples and balancing them in terms of locations. But once your rotor's in and your sample's in, close it and simply push start if you're happy with the program that's already there. This unit comes in two different varieties. It comes in a refrigerated version and a non-refrigerated version. The version we have here is the non-refrigerated version, and this is less than 54 decibels when actually operating. The refrigerated version will be under 49 decibels when operating. As you can see, there's a range of 10 different rotors, including, if you, if you want, even a small swing-out rotor. You can take up to 24 uh, 0.2 or 2 microliter uh, microtubes in this centrifuge and it'll spin up to about 15,000 RPM or just under 14,800. With this one you do have a nice feature of a quick start and a quick stop and to access that you just hold down the start stop button and, and, and keep your finger on it. It'll automatically ramp up and when you take your finger off it will automatically ramp back down. Or alternatively you can program your maximum speed you can program the amount of time you want to run for, and you can even program your ramp down rate, all with just three buttons. And when you're finished with a run, once it's actually come to a standstill, the lid will nicely just open slightly for you so you're ready to begin again. It's a really compact centrifuge, but it's got a, a reasonable amount of mass to it. It's six kilograms in weight. This is the non-refrigerated version, and it only takes about 95 watts when it's actually running, so it's relatively energy efficient as well. But it won't take up a lot of space on, on your bench, and these surfaces are very easy to clean. You've got this nice viewing window in the top, so you can see exactly what's happening in the centrifuge. Not that there's a lot to see, but you can certainly see that the rotor is running or the rotor is stationary if you had any concerns at all about the display. Now that might come in handy if you get a power failure in your laboratory uh, or something else is happening unusually with your power and you're just not sure. You'll find the link to all the details and specifications about the Sigma 1-14 and its refrigerated brother below. But if you've got any specific questions or comments about this product or indeed anything else from our catalog, please leave a comment and our specialist will get right back to you. If you like the content that we produce, feel free to leave a thumbs up or share it with somebody you think might find it helpful. Don't forget to subscribe and remember, John Morris is here to help you succeed with technology. Thanks so much for watching and bye for now.